All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. Today we're talking to Michael Simonetti in a special series of talking to people from the community about the COVID-19 and coronavirus crisis. Michael's uh, been somewhat on Facebook and from around the place, he's been talking um, a lot about what's been going on with this virus and he's someone who seems very knowledgeable about it. So uh, first of all, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in marketing and the technology. Uh, okay, Rich. Um, background in marketing. So my marketing background came from, uh, as you know, working in nightclubs. True. That's where it all started, uh, where I cut my teeth on marketing, PR, promotions, all sorts of stuff. And the tech background comes from, I did a degree in computer science and engineering. So that, uh, that's as pretty, as, as pretty much as tech as you can get. Yes. So the two got combined at some point, uh, yep. you know, on the, on the journey of life. Yes. And um, we, uh, and, and this is where we are, right? Very good. And this is the logo for your business here we're looking at? This is my uh, company logo and mine. So uh, we're sitting in our... Newly freshly painted boardroom or 50% painted boardroom. So we've cut that out, but it looks, uh, I think it looks pretty special <laughs> otherwise. All right. Well, let's get down to business, eh? All right, mate. Um, what do you think of this event? I mean, what do you think of this whole corona, COVID-19 wow, it's, and its genesis and how it's spread? What, what are your thoughts? Well, it's surreal, isn't it? It is surreal. It's, it's something that you would not experience in, you think you'd experience in your lifetime. <laughs> and we have, and we yes. are. And it's, it's still really hard to put your finger on. Mm. You know, I've been looking at data and pulling things apart and looking at marketing and thinking about all these different aspects. And I mean, it's here, it's yeah. real, but it just feels like it's not, it's not quite real. It does you know, feel you strange. Can't, you can't just get a perfect sense of it, can you? Have you seen this graffiti around town? It's COVID-1984, people have been put. Right. It does seem to be a sort of creeping totalitarianism that seems to have sort of been part of it. I mean, do you think, do you think this is justified or do you think that, I mean, obviously with something like this, there has to be some reaction. I mean, if there is something terrible in the community, and it does seem like Australia's reaction has kind of worked. What are your thoughts on that? I think what Australia's done has worked so far. Yeah. Um, I think right now we are out of crisis mode in Australia, especially. Yep. And a lot of countries are out of that mode now, right? Like yep. throwing our hands up in the air, what the F's going on? What do we do next? Yep. I think that first part was solved astronomically well here. It was, right? Yeah. Like yeah. leaders coming together, bipartisanship, mm -hmm. people understanding the community getting it, right? Like yeah. all different levels of society here really came together and said, okay, this is Australia, what are we gonna do about it? Yep. And that worked. And I think that's worked for a lot of countries, but now it's what's phase two. It is, it is, we're heading towards phase two at the moment. Um, so uh, you've showed, shared a lot of really interesting graphs um, on Facebook um, and on social media and other, other platforms throughout this crisis. Have you got anything now you could kind of whack on the screen to kind of walk us through your observations, maybe how it began and, and how Australia handled it and maybe how other countries handled it or something? Yeah, mate, I certainly do. So the, look, very first thing, this started because uh, I'm just going back to the very, very first post that I was doing back here. Sure. This started as, first of all, like the media hype on this was astronomical. Right? Yeah. Think... Like it, it went from zero to 100 in like 24 hours. I know. What? That's... Which was strange. Okay. Yes. But again, this is when people get a wind of it and all of a sudden it's, it's, a, it's a thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I remember looking into this sort of like late Jan thinking this is a very strange mm -hmm. thing that's happening in China. And then... Uh, watched some YouTube videos on it, but didn't make, didn't take a lot into it, right? Yep. So, but it was on the radar. And then as things started progressing, right, my first post here, I can't even remember when this was, but sort of early March. So yep. after, I think after Grand Prix got cancelled. Yeah, that was when everyone stood, took serious. notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything started getting I was very, the same, yeah. Everything got really serious straight away, right? It did, yeah. And... The, main, the first thing you think about is, okay, I've got to look after my parents. Yes. Right? yes. What, is, what does this mean, mm -hmm. right? And my background or well, you know, part of my heritage is Italian. Yep. You could see what was going on in Italy, yep. which was bonkers. It was right? bonkers. What the fuck happened there, mate? Like a bomb exploded, right? It was. Yeah. So then I went, okay, I've got to, I'm, going to, I'm going to pull the data apart. Yep. What is available online? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of those guys that dig into all sorts of platforms, mm -hmm. pull out the data. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's really going on? Yep. And so... Straight away, it's like, who's infected? What's the, what's the age of death? 
Sure. Right? And straight away you start to realize, well, this is something that's got to do with like the elderly. I, yep. I, I get knocked off by this. Yep. So for here on this graph, for example, you've got, it's almost like negligible up to the age of 60. So it's yeah. like 0 0.2 up to the age of 60. Yeah, it's but then after 60, it begins to get more serious. Yeah, as soon as you hit sort of 50, 60 year olds. Yeah, like and it gets, after 80, it becomes 13%. And this is the sort of stuff I'm collating and I'm sending it to my dad and I'm saying, dad, stay home. Yeah, Keep yeah. mum home, yeah. right? Because this is not something that you guys are going to deal yeah, well with. Yeah. Well, my mother was running around when all this began. She didn't believe it until like the end of March. Yeah. You know, so, I had to go around and see her and tell her, stay home, you know, you know, these old dears, you know what they're like. They're going down the shop, you're not stopping me. <laughs> so you send that, my dad's very scientific, very, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, conservative and safe orientated, yep, right? Yep. But I send him this stuff and he's like, ah, oh, what about, you know, it's got to have underlying health issues. This is just going to be something normal again, right? Mm -hmm. This is another thing, another Does flu. he live in Australia? Yeah, he lives yeah. here. They live, they live out, out in the burbs. Yeah. Um, so that, that next couple of posts I sent to him, mm -hmm. right? And this was the start of it. I'm collating it, putting it together, mm -hmm. sending it to him, saying, stay home, please, stay home. We don't know what this is yet. Yes. This feels like something bigger than mm -hmm. normal, all right? Anyway, a couple of posts in, he's like, okay, I'm going to stay. I'm, I get it. I'm going to yeah. stay home, right? But I was already on this thing, and I was like, okay, I've got to make more sense of this. Once mm -hmm. I'm on something, mm -hmm. you know, if you know me, once I'm on something, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to figure it out. Well, you're pretty obsessive about this for a while. I'm obsessive about, I'm <laughs> obsessive about everything. Right? The, Once you get into it. Yeah, that's why I don't drink anymore, Rich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you're obsessive. Right? All, that, all, that stuff that we, all that great stuff we did in the disco, <laughs> that's true, disco yes. days. On the right? It's all yes, done, you. right? It is done. So now I get obsessed about these sort of things uh -huh, uh -huh. and I follow them through. But okay, so that got Dad comfortable and then the next thing was, all right, what South happens Korea, now? Yeah, South yeah. Korea, right? So the next thing I look at is, okay, who's doing, who's doing well in, in the world scale. Sure. So again, this data was just sort of readily available. It wasn't complicated, mm -hmm. but it was, it was like surface level information of what happens next. Yes. And as I got, as I dug further and further into it, it was like really hard to get clarity on things because it does seem that way. Well, that's what society is like. I think the media are very good at throwing big numbers at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people don't want to absorb, absorb complicated pieces of information. Uh -huh. So the more complicated it is, mm. the less probable that media is going to cover it. Yeah, right? that's true. They say flatten the curve and then what percentage of the population understands what that graph means? No, exactly. No one. Hardly anyone. Well, I thought engineers. you did. Engineers. Yeah, yeah. Engineers. Right? Yeah. And you're so an engineer, right? That's right. Yeah. So for me, looking at graphs, you know, mm. it's funny. I was speaking to another engineer and mm. she goes, ah, oh, it's so funny. Like no one knows how to read a graph. <laughs> Right, yeah. and to us it's like water. You yeah, know, it's like the most basic thing in the world to read. Yeah, because we, you know, we spent six, five, six years or whatever getting slammed with that information. Yeah, with that that type of information. Yeah, yeah. Sense and how it. to so, deal with it. Yeah. So these are really basic things for us. Yep. So again, once I start scratching the surface, and, and I'm you know not the fucking smartest engineer, right? Sure. Like I'm, I own a marketing company now. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. And uh, but yeah, I st I was trying to add things up, and so I. I keep digging and I keep looking for stuff. That's where we got to, you know, all sorts of posts on figuring out the symptoms. Yep. Again, and I'm trying to get stuff out to my friends and family early. What's this one here? Start on day and passed on. What was the passed on rate with this so disease? This is so if someone had it and was wandering around the city, what's the chance of infecting other people? Yeah, well, th this is the thing is it's like there's, a, there's almost a, a one month window on this. Really? It's really sticky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? If you have it, yeah. Yeah. you probably won't show symptoms for a, you know, a week. Even if I do show them. If you do it all, yeah. right? Because there's a lot we know now. 80% of people don't show them. Show right? nothing, right? So people and could have it and they don't fucking know. Well, that's why. It's a very sticky virus that, can't, that, that grabs mm. a hold of people and sometimes doesn't show its head at all. Yep. But it's there. And yep. it's being passed around. Yep. So, again, I'm you know, figuring this out, saying, again, to, to friends and family, be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful, right? This is the spread. Uh -huh. This is where it started. Here's a nice little video. Um, do you think China was negligent? To begin uh, with? This is, a, this is a huge question, right? Yeah, it is. And obviously, okay. recently, even so mainstream news... It starts in China. We yeah. know that, for sure. For right? sure. Then there's a whole lot of stories about how did it start? Did it really start there? What's going on with this Bat Wuhan lab? Wuhan right? lab. Yeah. All of these things, man. It's like... The, it's what are your thoughts? Conspiracy fodder. It right? is, yeah. Um, um, unbelievable. Like, we can have the most fun... You couldn't write a better conspiracy theory than no, this. It's like a Michael it's Crichton novel. These, it's got all these little pieces, yeah. right? And it's interesting because that one is, uh, 
this is what got me interested in it in the first place. Right? Really? I saw a post about that uh, Harvard professor that hires the two yeah, Chinese... Uh, um, Who was that? Uh, you know, the two guys in the Chinese army or something, right? Yeah, who was that? It's a Harvard professor or one of the MIT... Charles Lieber, professors. I think his name I can't is. remember. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I saw that post and I'm yeah. like... I was throwing it around to friends going, have you seen this virus? Like, this is a, this is a, this is a novel. Yeah, yeah. Right? But then it's like a little bit shocking that, that the... Department of Justice or something arrests him. They did, didn't they? Yeah, that yeah. was Charles Lieber for sure. And uh, guy, yeah. you know they're chasing down these two, two Chinese nationals, and he's yeah. getting paid from Wuhan University. Or yeah, again, it's a book. I know, and it just go like something's going on here. This and is you, too weird. You Google that guy's name. Did Charles Lieber cause the coronavirus? There is a hundred sites online saying he didn't. Now, if there's one or two, I'd think, well, okay, maybe they're just denying he did it. But the fact that there's a hundred, that's suspicious. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, right? Yeah. And it's one of those things that how much information do we get? Yep. Like what level of information do you and I, the public, yes, yes. actually get to? What do we get out of China? Do you, I mean, you know, what, what, what kind of truck do you put in the kind of uh, information or the statistics? Because obviously you're a statistic man of the information we're getting out of China. I mean, apropos its infection rate, I mean, do you think a lot more people died there than... If you read the posts on this, I'm saying a lot. Look, mm. there's data from China. Yep. But I wouldn't, like... Yeah, take it I to the bank. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it, right? Yeah. Um, so, again, I'm looking at stuff out of Italy. Italy and South Korea had early data because they, they yes. were hot spots hit first, yes. okay? So that was where I could bank on data and go, okay, I... You know, mm. I've got friends in South Korea. I've got family in Italy. Italy, yeah. The numbers are probably right. Yeah. And South Korea point, handled it well, am I right? Very well. Yeah. But Italy didn't. It was like a disaster. What happened there? Uh, again, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's something that why it did it catches hit so you hard? off guard. And why did it hit so hard in Iran of all fucking places? Well, it's where where did people travel from from mainland China first to these places? Yeah. And what is the why connection between? Why would China between... people be travelling to Iran? Do you know? Are they an ally? They are an ally. I don't know. Or was it a Mossad special delivery? <laughs> Here's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of good conspiracy theories on this yeah, one. Yeah, right? we, 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 do, we do entertain them. It, it's, it's one of those things where, like, okay, let's put the marketing hat on for a second. Yeah, okay? yeah. What are, why are people travelling to Italy from China? Yeah, why? Yeah, it's good shopping. That's right? true. When you stereotype things in yeah. marketing, you look for those sort of things because you can expand on them. Yep. And that's what we look for to sell, sell products. Was right. there not a campaign in Italy for like hug, hug you know, because you know when, when this began and it was out of China, there was this kind of mood of like, oh, you're, you know, if you're blaming it on Chinese people, it's racist or something. And there was even a move to like hug, hug a Chinaman, or literally, or yeah, hug yeah. a Chinese immigrant kind right, of thing, right, which right. really turned out badly. Not, I mean, not a good idea, not a good right? Idea. <laughs> not in this one. <laughs> well, this one. Not in this one. Okay, but you know, you go back to China, yeah. right? Something's wrong. Yeah. Everyone's like beating the drum of China screwed up here. Yeah, yeah. Either by not telling us yeah. or by hiding something mm. or, you know, I mean, they're not the most open regime in the world. Well, they're right? not open at all. <laughs> okay. They're one of the closed. I mean, so, North Korea might be worse, but, you know. So my heart goes out only mm. to the Chinese people. Right? Well, they're the ones because, who've been suffering, aren't they? Well, yeah. I mean, like the, the whole concept of wet markets mm. is a new concept that no one heard of before, right? No, like even if you had travelled... And you've seen this sort of stuff, and I've travelled through Asia, not through too, China, yeah. but you see you see some of that stuff. Right? I've seen it in Thailand. Things yeah, like I've seen that, it yeah. in Thailand yeah. too, and you just go, "Wow!" You don't realise mm. that this is like where they get. They don't have beef farms and cattle farms and stuff. No, if they no. get beef, they get it from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not a billion people getting that food, yeah, right? Yeah. And to to feed their population, that's what they've got to do. Yep, yep. So they're not. That, that's not just going to turn around overnight. Yes. So is that, is that how this happened? I don't think that this is the first time that there's been an outbreak. I reckon they're happening all the time. The weird thing with the bat soup and all that and the wet markets is um, that was obviously the story that was being pushed early on. And uh, I, I bought it for a long time. And obviously, but they have been eating this way for a long time. They've been eating dogs and cats. And they're obviously a very strange. There was a funny meme on Facebook where it's like, you know, what won't they eat? Or there was like, you know, Adam and Eve. If Adam and Eve were Chinese, it was like, you know, do you want an apple? And they don't eat the apple, they eat the snake, which is the devil, of course, which is a funny one. So they eat anything. And that, that's well known, not just in China, but in, in also Southeast Asia. Yeah, they, you know, they're they're used to, they eat tarantulas they're, they're and, to it and insects. And, 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 but where are you getting your calories from, right? Well, it's it's know, like, yeah. you, you know, that... But do you think it was the, the, the wet market or do you think... Because more recent evidence coming out of the Trump um, administration particularly is pointing to the Wuhan lab and also to the fact that it could be some 
whether it be accidentally um, let out or... I'm going to put my marketing hat on, right? Yep. If you're the, if you're the uh, president and you are fighting a tariff war with China yep. and you want leverage, yep. then, you know, it, it, you know, you throw a few things out there. Yeah, right? yeah, you exactly. see what sticks, yep, okay? Yep, yep. There doesn't have to be a conspiracy around it because the virus is now out. Is out, yeah. Sort of, they're going to figure out what happened and, you know, there's trillions yep. of dollars trying to be sued for China mm-hmm. and they're going to try and put up... It's all, it's all going to end up in the PR mix. It will, yes. Right? It's not going to be... There's the smoking gun. I don't mm. think. No, you're right. Because right? you never really, and you'll never really know. Because also the the genesis of this event w- is within the bounds of the, you know, Chinese Communist Party, who, as yeah. we know, is maybe uh, only after North Korea is one of the most secretive regimes on earth. Well, that's a good place to point. Maybe pause for part one, and then let's come back uh, for part two of our discussion with Michael Simony, an expert on uh, statistics and uh, expert, theories on this expert, coronavirus. Expert, that's a big <laughs> wow. <laughs> theorist, the- theorist, very good theorist. You know, Thanks, theorist. Rich. There you go. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with part two of our discussion with Michael Simonetti for and mine uh, about the coronavirus uh, crisis uh, and you know all the various um, matrix of uh, you know uh, disaster that sort of come down upon us. Jeez. In twenty twenty, what a year, eh? Oof, unbelievable. It started with bushfires, you know. Started with bushfires, which were astronomical, you know, like yep. world, world, world news. World news. Right? And, uh, and just couldn't get bigger, could it? And then it went virus. And then it went viral. And it's only in what, we're now in the beginning of May. So what the fuck's in, I don't know, God forbid what's, in, you know. You've seen the memes. It's Godzilla like, coming out of the what's ocean. What's next, yeah. So what's yeah. next, what's Godzilla? Next? What's next for 2020? Cthulhu climbing out of the huh? ocean. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Well, I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on the lockdown? I mean, um... You know, this has been one of the most controversial aspects of the whole crisis yeah. um, because, you know, obviously only 100 people have died in Australia. Yeah. Um, and, and that, you know, maybe right. that's a really good thing because obviously who wants to lose more, right? But the economic damage of, I mean, what's the economic fallout going to be? Um, I mean, everyone I know with a small business, has, it's had some effect already. Um, yeah. Even on my film festival, the Melbourne Underground Film Festival is having an effect. So go ahead, give us your thoughts on the lockdown. Again, I, this, is where, this is where I got to with this stuff, right? Is yep. like... I'm looking at it, okay, phase one, I think we're, we're basically solved. Everyone's yep. got it under control. What mm-hmm. happens next? Yeah. And then you go, what's that? what comes out of this? Yeah. Who's doing it right? Who's how doing do it we wrong? come out of it? How yeah. do we come out of it? When can we come out of it? Mm-hmm. And I put, again, I start you talking about, oh, I've got graphs, man. I've always well, got that's graphs. You know? always, he's always got a graph, ladies and gentlemen. That's a good thing about Michael. Lots of plenty of graphs, right? And so, we don't know how to read them. You know, he, could ha- he could be saying anything on these graphs. He admitted it himself. Only an engineer knows how to read these things. Right, so when does it end? Okay. okay. So this is quite a good, this, is, this sort of basically this summarizes. This is nice. This, right? I like it. So here you've got herd immunity. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Here you've got we a didn't... lockdown. Yep. Okay. Then you relax the lockdown. Uh-huh. We're basically here. Yep. Right? We are still here. Yeah, yeah. Right? We've got a lockdown, then it gets relaxed. Yep. What's going to go up? The cases. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So until you get to the end, which is a vaccine or treatment, yeah. we're just going to sort of yo-yo along. Really? Right? And how long is that going to be? We don't know. Rest of the year? Who knows? And do you believe this vaccine? What about Bill Gates and well, these suspicious... It's, it's, I reckon it's two things. Either vaccine or it's herd immunity. Yeah. Right? What, what, and they're basically the same thing. Yeah? yeah you realise that, yeah? yeah? yeah. Okay, if you, if you take a vaccine yeah, yeah. and you get antibodies... Yeah, yeah. Okay, herd immunity is Herd immunity, yeah, yeah. basically the same antibodies, right? So, yeah. Have you downloaded the COVID-19 app? I put did it download it. I put it on my you're phone. One. You're one. Really, you're It annoying me and Would then I turned it off. It annoyed you and you decided... Well, it's it? just... Okay, let me put the PR marketing hat on yeah, please, again, right? Yeah. The, the text and the messaging going out from the government is atrocious for this. Yeah, yeah. Right? It, it's, it's not... They've tried to r- ride the wave of what worked, yep, which is yep. that phase one, let's all work together to sort this out. Sure. Okay, you sorted that out. Now what's next? Mm-hmm. I think contact tracing is extremely difficult, mm. okay? Because if I- Is that what the app is If for? I have COVID, right? Yep. And I touch this desk. Yep, and then I touch it. And then you touch it. Yep, I'm fucked. Well, and then you touch your mouth, okay? And well, what do we go. touch? Touch a lot of things. Here we go, go to a shopping center, go to a Coles, go to a Woolies, right? Mm-hmm. You can't contact trace that. You can only contact trace if you and I together, yeah. right? And we have an embrace or something yeah, and yeah. that gets passed on. We don't, we don't keep that 1.5 meters, yeah, yeah, right? Which we are. 
the moment. Then if we've both got the app installed and then it can tell us who we contacted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So it's it's not perfect. It can work, yeah. but it's not perfect, right? So so you downloaded it onto your phone. I didn't mind downloading it, but then the messaging that came out was like, hey, don't forget to leave this on and don't forget to do this and, and please really? do that. And How it's many like, messages were you getting? Oh, I got a couple and yeah. that was enough. And then you deactivated it. I deactivated it because again... So you can deactivate it even if you download yeah, it. Yeah, well, you just delete it. Yeah, and you deleted it. I deleted it, right? <laughs> I don't have a problem with the privacy thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, so you didn't feel like it was you not problem, If you've got a problem with privacy, you mm. shouldn't have Facebook, you shouldn't no, of have course, LinkedIn, yeah. you shouldn't have Instagram, yeah. you shouldn't have anything. Well, they admitted that the other day. They said, you know, because um, the Prime Minister came out and gave a speech where he said, you've done well... Because you said, listen, we've been watching you anyway, because Google keeps track of everywhere everyone is anyway. Man, You've basically all been staying home. This, it's a wash, right? Like, yep. The line is, you know, we're beyond the point of, of living in a, in a non, you know, secured environment. You know? So this one here, the green line, is that what New Zealand did? Because she, she had a, almost like a stage four That's lockdown. Right. That's right. And, and they, have no, they have no cases now. Total lockdown. Total lockdown. They have no cases. Yeah, but all you need is one case. And then you're fucked again. Yeah. Or, or you can't open your country. Yep. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. All borders are shut down. This is like a right wing you know, dream at the yeah, moment. Yeah. You know, the no right borders. wingers are loving it. Right? We are. Yeah. This can be good for you know. This can be good for um, you know. I mean, obviously the idea is that it'll be reopened, but it does seem that um, I've noticed that even particularly left wingers who are normally very much open borders and stuff, in relation to this, they're worse than shut Pauline them. Hansen. They're like shut the bloody things down. There, they're full on. Isn't that amazing? It right? is amazing. Yeah. So what does it take for you to be you know mm. to switch a position on something that's so? Yeah, exactly. Let everybody in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't, will you? No. And that's the interesting, uh, uh, like, that switch. Dialectic, yeah. Oh, yeah amazing. Isn't it? Very interesting. So, um, so you have no problem with the kind of the technology. You weren't fearful of, you know, of a kind of 1984 kind of situation with it, but you found it annoying when, you know... I you think we're already in, in a, you know, a post-privacy world, right? Yeah, It's are. not my line. Yeah. That's, that's the line that's out there, right? It it's is, a perfect yeah. line. We're in a post-privacy world. Yeah. So... You think the government... Get used to it. Yeah. The SCOMA government, do you believe it's... Uh, and also Daniel Andrews, because we can talk about him as well. Do you think they've handled it well? Like Daniel Andrews this week, uh, the recommendation from Canberra is to allow children to go back to school, but Daniel Andrews has said no to that. What, it's all what, political now, right? Yeah, it has become political. They don't care. Yeah. They don't. Right? I mean, mm. they care. Yep. But a great line I heard on years ago on Q&A uh, UK, I think it was, mm -hmm. right? Where a guy gets up and he's super frustrated. He's like, I don't know... Late mid fifties, late fifties, he gets up and he goes and he's talking to politicians that are sitting in front of him. Yep. And he goes, "You guys don't understand. You're meant to represent us. Yes. Not make your own decisions and tell us what we like." Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that idea has permeated politics well enough. No, it hasn't. Right? And, and the only opportunity we have to change is when we vote the next person in. Yes. But it's the system that's a mess. Yeah. Because they chase our votes and they cha they they throw you know flashy things in front of the the population on both sides. We vote yeah. for that. Yep. Then it doesn't happen, and then they use their power to try and stay in power. You know, it's 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 not perfect. No, it isn't, is it? Yeah. yeah. But that idea, if that idea could could permeate politics, and like once you're in, listen to the people. Yep. Then I think that, and you asked me about Dan Andrews, I think Dan Andrews was doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the winds of change have shifted in the last week because yep. in Victoria, mm. we're seeing other states open mm. and we've got less cases. Yes, yes. So why is that? But I don't have a reason from him why we're not, op why we're not doing the same thing. And obviously too, um, uh, you know, obviously like even if you were to say go for herd immunity and let the virus run free, so to speak, uh, it would still only affect a, a small amount of people within the community, mainly older people, things like this. We don't um, know. But things like um, an economic crisis, um, the global financial crisis affected about 5% of our GDP or something, but this has the potential to affect almost a quarter, someone has said. So, I mean, obviously, well, what and goes, that can have a follow-on effect. What happens on the other side of this? Well, that's right. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? That's what everyone's worried about. Yeah. And you've never seen anything like this. You can say the Great Depression or you can say GFC yeah. and you could probably say both of those at once. Get right? out your crystal ball. What do you think? No one's got a crystal ball on this one. What, right? what do you speculate for maybe your interest in graphs and you know, that kind of thing? I haven't really looked into it, Rich. I would yeah. like to. Yeah. But I, you, know, you need to understand economics and you need to understand how markets move yeah, better yeah. and you've got, to, you've got to dig into all of that stuff and that's a, a minefield. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out it. it probably won't be good. You know what I mean? It's going to have a negative effect you know, uh, for a while at least, at least for the rest of the year. Maybe if we're lucky we could pull out of it by 2021. But well, look, Australia, I think, 
we're going to be in a relatively luckier position. We will be. We yeah. were in GFC, yep, right? Yep. It didn't hit us as hard because, you know, yep. for whatever reason, Australia is insulated against these things. We are a little, yeah. We yeah. are a little. So mm. I'm opti- But I'm always an optimist. Me too. Yeah, so yeah. I think right. good luck for Australia. Right? Good luck. All right. Well, that's probably a good point to leave part two. And we'll be back to part three to talk about the, I guess, the geopolitical stage, its effect on Donald Trump and, and world politics, uh, COVID-19, and to maybe wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part three of the report from Tiger Mountain. A fascinating chat here with uh, Michael Simonetti, a theorist on what's going on at the moment, uh, a man with many graphs uh, on what's going on with the corona COVID-19 crisis. So uh, tell us a little bit about um, another philosophy towards handling this virus of herd immunity. Um, What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, this is how we handled viruses in the past exactly right? this is the, the natural uh, the natural order of things or the natural way um why has this been different well is it any different right? yeah, exactly, so right? there's uh i look as soon as i started you know uk threw through that idea out there first herd immunity yeah right? they did yeah someone Boris texted Johnson. me and said hey herd immunity and at that point mm-hmm. i'm looking at a five or six percent death rate you know because that's where the mm-hmm. numbers were and i said that's a batshit crazy idea because okay? it's full on yeah well because you just can't go and kill five percent of the population even if it's the elderly yeah, yeah. at any point right yeah, yeah, yeah you know like we talked about my parents at the start sure in their age group it's like 10 yeah, percent yeah you know one in 10 one mm. in 13 right mm. one in eight chance of death it's too high yeah it's yeah. crazy you're not it rolling is. the dice on that yeah, yeah yeah right so um but herd immunity okay it's a it's it's a possibility right mm-hmm. And uh, what got me really interested in it was two things, a Stockholm study and a Santa Clara study, right? Mm-hmm. The Stockholm study, I emailed the professor and said, can I have a look at your new, new numbers? Mm-hmm. And the Santa Clara uh, study was like, you know, it showed this was done by Stanford research, yep. okay? And they saw in the population a 50 to 85 times higher infection rate than what the tests were being reported wow. in, that, in that area. Mm-hmm. So that takes something that's a you know a few percent death rate mm. down to a few point few percent death rate. Why are we right? seeing difference in death rates around the world? Well, Obviously, it's astronomically different. Do you believe the, the virus is mutating? Could uh, there be different strains? Could there, there be even there, two? There already is different strains. Yeah. So you look at the CDC data, and there's hundreds of different strains. As soon as it hits a different group of people, it yeah. acts differently. It does, yeah. right? D- different biological makeup. It's so it doesn't affect. have to be a conspiracy theory for it to act differently. Uh, look. You and I, we love the conspiracy. We do theories, love it. Right? Yeah. We get into that, and you could, you yeah. know, you spend you all day. You talk all day going down that rabbit hole. It it swings in roundabouts. So yes, yep. there's always another reason why, mm-hmm. right? So that one can be ticked off quite easily. It's going to mutate. There mm-hmm. are mutations. They know about them. But go back to herd immunity, right? Like this is a really interesting thing. If the prevalent, if it is that prevalent, and there's things that people talk about, false positives, and you know, this is. It's, it's easy to get a wrong result yep. from, a, from a, a, a herd immunity test, especially when the tests are rushed yeah. and all these problems with testing. Yeah. Okay? But the, the rates are different all over the world because the testing is different all over the world and the speed at which it, it attacks uh, populations and density. And mm-hmm. we don't know all the numbers. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things I got to with this is we're not given enough information. Like when you mm-hmm. try and find out that information, it's complicated graphs and mm-hmm. complicated information and you've got to spend hours on it. And who has that time unless yes. you're in this, in this field? What are you using as a source for information? I look at CDC data. I look at uh, research reports. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm looking at... All over uh, the place. Well, it's, I'm not looking at the media and going, okay, I'm yes. looking at the media and going, what are they reporting? Is it interesting? And then mm. I try and find the raw data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that way at least you've got... And that's your background, on. right? Yeah. But you, you don't have... It's, again, you're not getting the whole picture. And you've got a page here on Facebook called Coronavirus Data and Insights for Family. Some, something anyone can join? Anyone can join now. All right, yeah. I opened it up. It was yeah. for family and friends at the start yes. to get them to, you know... Yeah, pay attention. Uh, yeah. Pay Stay attention. alive. But I opened it up because it's like, well, there's enough Quite information popular, here yeah. now and I'm, and I'm pretty I, uh, relatively well vetted. I do recommend you join it, ladies and gentlemen, because it's really spot on and Michael is an expert with um, statistics and with graphs and things. They're, they're great. Uh, talk, can we talk to Sweden? I mean, obviously, they have almost gone for the herd immunity. For the herd immunity. What, are, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, again, now I'm waiting for that data, right? Like, the, the, what is the herd what immunity? What are we seeing? What is out? the actual herd immunity? How many people have died there? 
Uh, yeah, well, their numbers aren't good because death-wise, yeah. they're like three to five times their neighbours who locked down. Okay, and well, what is that? Uh, I don't have the... Whatever Approximately. It is, I think it's a few thousand or something Yeah, like it's a that, thousand right? or two, yeah. And but we've had a hundred here. We've had a hundred. But their, their population is smaller than Australia, though. It's like it? 10 mil, I think. Yeah, 10 mil, yeah. Okay, but um, let's, let's, it's better to compare them against their, their neighbours, yes. right? Because they've like got... Like Denmark this, and... Um, it's like comparing us to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denmark, Finland, I and think. And Norway. And Norway, right? Finland. So if they've had a three to five times death rate, and again, yeah. the numbers are a little bit off everywhere. Sure. Okay? Um, so they've done a worse job so far. Mm. But have they done a better job in future? What's the exit strategy of this? If they've got herd immunity, they yeah. can just open up their economy, yep. and decide who comes in, and they've got a safe place. Yeah. Right? They don't have to wait for a vaccine or, mm-hmm. or, or, or any uh, drug or any you know, medication to solve this. Yes. Well, Maybe f- that, but that, you're going to find that out in the next few months. We are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing I, I see people talking about is like that, um, particularly on the ABC, is like, you know, they do believe once we reopen, there'll be another spike somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until you get rid of all cases, yeah. all known cases, you mm-hmm. might. Mm-hmm. But so then the do we have to go back into lockdown again? Is this going to be yo yo yo? Well, that's the that yo yo, right? So you're going to keep on that doing that. Level. Yeah, you're going to keep doing God. that yo yo. So we're, we're, we're fucked for the rest of the year, basically. Maybe longer. Maybe longer. Right. Until Bill Gates' vaccine turns until, up. Until Bill Are you going to take the vaccine if he turns up with his vaccine? Don't know. Now, let's, let's talk at, about let's Bill Gates. Do you trust the motherfucker? Because <laughs> I don't, I'll tell you I know that, you don't. I know you, you don't. You, 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 you're a bit, you warm to him a bit more, maybe. Well, I just, you know, until you've got, uh, until you've got something that you can say, look, he's done really badly on that. And he's yeah. done badly on a lot of things, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. He's done good on things. He's done bad on things. Mm-hmm. Why Again, is my the... radar for Bill Gates and why I don't mm. super trust the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Is because the early version of Windows yep. was one of those platforms that, you know, I was a computer nerd. You right? were, yeah. So I had, you know, I was building my own computers when, yep. you know, when it was like before he was. it was popular, right? Yeah, yeah, before it was popular. And I, I was programming when I was sort of five or six. My dad brought me a computer home. You early. serious? Yeah, I was, man, I was into computers like super early. Yeah? Early, yeah. I mean, that's why I did like computer what science did, and all the know? nerdy mm, shit, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, on his, one of his early Windows uh, machines, when you know, dial-up and those sort of things started happening, he was copying down all the files and all the records off our computers, right? Talk about invasion of privacy. Really? Why? Because he could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Because it wasn't like a thing that you couldn't do. It was like, yeah. I do whatever I want. I'm yeah. Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah. That shit me back then, and that was like, I was in high school. Yeah. What year was that? Or in the 80s? would have been 80s yeah, yeah. right i don't know the exact year but i, mean, yeah, yeah. I know that happened right because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I lived it and it was yeah. like that was one of the things that you just go man this is not a good thing yeah yeah but i'll tell you my so my, he throws his power around he does well he throws whatever he can around oh, he's definitely doing that at the moment you know yeah. and then the uh, you know bill and melinda gates foundation yeah. i think the why did he move from computing into vaccines what's the what's the connection well i think he's doing a lot of stuff he's mm. doing nuclear power he's doing waste he's doing vaccines he's yeah, you know yeah. he's one of these guys that's like i'm going to help solve the world yeah, 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 yeah. Right? But it's yeah. like any person in power. Yeah. You, you, just because you throw a lot at it doesn't mean it's going to be solved, nor mm. does it mean you're going to help. Yeah, Because yeah, these yeah, are big yeah. things. They are big things, yeah. Very dangerous, scary things that you're playing with. Yep. And money doesn't necessarily solve it, and mm. being super smart doesn't necessarily solve it. That's true. Right? It, it, it might just take a generation for people to figure it out. So I'm not sure. So if you're on the fence out, with Bill Gates, but you'll just see what he comes up with. Because Donald Trump is even talking about a vaccine, because there's, obviously there's a the whole anti-vax community. And I, to me, I, I've never been an anti-vaxxer. I'm just always about it being like a safe vaccine. If the vaccine is safe, I'll fucking take it myself. But I just want to know it's safe, you know? Well, again, sci- that's what science needs to prove. It can't yep. be rushed. No. It can't be, uh, you know, scared. It can't be marketing. Yep, yep. Right? It has to be... You need this because yep. you will die, you will get polio, you yep. will get measles without it, right? So, mm. you know, vaccines have done incredible things around the world in yes. terms of mor- mortality, especially of infant mortality. In some areas, yeah. Right? Unbelievable. Yeah, they right? also have caused damage, apparently. So, you know, so. And now here's a case where it could be used. Mm-hmm. You know, if your economy is going to open next week because everyone in the country can take a vaccine, mm-hmm. fantastic. But th- sure. there's enormous challenges to get that out. There is. Now, let's get on to, um, I guess, the number one topic in many ways. There's something about this virus that seems to be almost like aimed at Donald Trump and his economic success. Because let's think about this. Let's, <laughs> you remember that 
you know, this, all, this virus almost started just after Trump's deal with China that kind of put them on the back foot, you know, where they were kind of compromised economically. Yeah. And it's almost, and again, the fact that now that it could have maybe leaked out of a, it's all very convenient because China's economy is almost recovered from their crisis already. They're ready to do business as soon as anyone can actually fucking do business with them. As I said, as we said before, you couldn't do a better job on conspiracy theories no. than this one, right? No. Like this has got everything. It has got it all. It, it, what do they say? Uh, you couldn't write the script. No, it's like a Michael Crichton. No, better. You know, yeah. Better, right? Like the Andromeda strain. And we're all leads. living this movie, which we is are. unbelievable. It's but a weird event, isn't it? Look, what Trump's doing is its always interesting from yeah. a marketing perspective, from a PR perspective, mm -hmm. the, the way he, he energises his base, yep. all of that stuff. And the fact that he's got the, you know, he's got a show on TV every day again. Yeah, he's doing, that's what he does, right? yeah, he does. Yeah, he does the White, does the White House press briefings, right? And, that's, and now Steve Bannon, you mentioned, he's kind of he's like the Trump's brain. Well, many have called him Trump's old brain, right? No, he's been. Um, uh, you said he's been doing podcasts since January. Well, Tell us a bit about he, them. He's a pro-Chinese people, anti-CCP. Yep, right. Anti-communist right? party. He just can't. You know, he he calls the CCP the mafia. Right? Yeah. Trump, the Communist Party well, like the Mafia. Yeah. And, uh, but it says, you know, Chinese people, greatest people on earth. Yes, right? yes, yes. So how, do we, how does he and, and how do we think and look after the Chinese people? Yes. But also, He's after regime change, obviously. Well, how big a job is that? Uh, I know, I know. Right? Maybe this I, is I wouldn't one like of those to invade things, China, would you? You know, I said to a few friends, like, China, China are the Oswalds in this. They're the Patsies. Yes, yes. Right? Maybe. Mm. It's too convenient. Wuhan yes. lab, this, uh, yeah, you yeah. know... The virus is leaked from there. You know, it's shut down. All the numbers are wrong. What mm -hmm. are they going to do? Automatically not be transparent. Mm -hmm. Right? If, if you want cover, mm -hmm. you couldn't design better cover. No, it's true. Mm -hmm. So what does Bannon say? He says it's like a huge catastrophe. It's almost a war from his perspective. Right? Well, his, his is the economic war that he's, that he's yeah. looking at. Right? He's like, you know, China are manipulating everything. Currency, stocks, business, buying things, you know. Mm -hmm. Where he says we're at economic war with China. Yep. The first world is. Well, that's true. Yeah. So is, that, uh, is uh, that something that plays out? And that's what Trump's after, tariffs and all those other things. What right? do you make of uh, WHO uh, and like Dr. Ted and Fauci and stuff? They seem to be singing um, uh, Beijing's line a lot. And then there was that interesting interview where someone was mentioning Taiwan. Some journalist, Asian journalist, was talking about ta maybe yeah. she was Taiwanese. She was talking about Taiwan, and the guy from who literally would not answer her fucking question, and he literally just turned the fucking like camera off. He's like, "That's it, ladies and gentlemen." It's one of those things, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Like, once you, you know, what do these organisations do? How powerful are they? Mm. How much overreach do they have? Mm -hmm. How bloated are they? Right? How much do they want for the world to be a better place versus you know? Is their strategy in the right place? Yes. I, I don't know, man. It feels it feels like they're stuffing quite a few things up. It does feel like they are stuffing and, and things up. And what I like more than anything is transparency. Okay? Yes. Like that's the number one thing. Right? So you think Trump is doing something positive in relation to like the fact that he often brings out inconsistencies in what who's doing and what was the whole chloroquine? What did you think of the whole chloroquine? Quite, you know, like it was. Yeah. Any drug should be looked at. If yeah. there's scientific evidence around it, the challenge is, is you know, once something becomes political, it gets yep. pulled out of the scientific domain and it becomes marketing, it becomes PR. Yep. And we have that constant problem. Like, even if a good, if something good is available, right, mm. it'll get shut down because, you know, Trump said it. Exactly. That's crazy. I mean, shouldn't there be just the papers that speak for themselves in terms of the scientific testing? Absolutely. What, what effect do you think it'll have on the 2020 election? Do you think... I mean, obviously, they're running Biden, who seems like a reasonably bad candidate in anyone's book. He's always, there's always those videos online of him making these ridiculous... I think Trump's bad in relation to putting, making gas. There's definitely corruption in all systems. Of course. Right? You agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah? Anything that's complicated or busy, there's going to be corruption or people that take advantage of that system... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, my personal take is I think that they were shit scared of Bernie, right? Because he was a pull the system down guy as yeah, he well, was, yeah. right? And he was like uh, the left wing version of Trump. Yeah, and uh, so that, that base, him. you know, the, the <laughs> Democratic base went with Biden. Yeah, you know, whether or not that was pushing Bernie aside or it was yeah. forcibly pushing him aside, I don't something know. Something like that. So, yeah. It's weird, right? Because it yeah. seemed like he had such energy and so much support again. You mean Bernie? For the second time. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, and you know like they fucked him twice. A lot of Bernie bros are very pissed off. But I think Bernie screwed up as well. Like, wouldn't you be out there going, if you really screwed me? Yeah. 
Like if you really screwed me, yeah, I'd yeah. be out there. Go, I'd tear, I'd be tearing that down. Going, no, nah, but he's me. afraid. He's afraid. You know, it's, it's like he's afraid, afraid of Hillary. What, what Remember, Hillary What's having that? a heart attack. They already gave him one heart attack. Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Number two was the. That's the one warning you got. That was a free. Listen, Bernie, that's your free heart attack because oh, the God. second one's final. <laughs> but yeah, look, you know what? It's just more more than anything. Everything what? is very entertaining. Would That's you true. Agree with that, it is entertaining. It's American the best Bobby. show on. It's the best show. Best show on television. I will say this too. I mean, something about the lockdown. It's not been completely unpleasant. You know, spending more time with your family. Spending. I mean, I've been reading a lot more. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I tend to read more sensational stuff normally, but I've been getting back into my philosophy books again. And you know, it's been this, good and bad, man. I got four kids, so like, it's, yeah. it's crazy. You're trapped with them. <laughs> But it has been bugger. good as well, right? When like do they go get back to, to school? Time. Well, they're doing that uh, home, you know, the, the online schooling. How's that going? Well, it's challenging, man. Yep. You know, it's. I think it's going to be. I think it's the sort of thing where we would have to do it for a long time to get yeah. really good at it. Like yeah, technology-wise, yeah. yeah, it's maintenance. It's yes. not fast learning. It's yep. not. It's not face to face. What we're doing now, yep. Yep. right? That's di- very difficult. Society hasn't reached a point where technically we are able to get to get to that point yet. Yeah, I, I do think it's different, and I do think it's the sooner we can get kids back to school, probably the better. But Absolutely. I think a couple of months of homeschooling shouldn't harm them too much. Well, there'll be some benefits out. It'll harm of them, the parents right? more probably. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, it's a challenge, but like yeah. it's good for the kids because they're going to learn. They're going to rapidly learn about computers and the importance true, of them, yeah, and, yeah. and like understanding how. You know, like my kids here, they're in uh, grade three. Mm-hmm. You know, they know how to pull down a PDF file now, mark it up, you know, mm-hmm. print it off. You know, yeah, like yeah. all those things. That would have taken a long time to learn otherwise. That's true. That's true. So have you got anything in summary, in summary for all the discussion that the three parts we've had? Would you like to sum up? You know, what do you summary, think? Summary, um, look, look at what's going to happen next. That's what we should all be focused on, right? Like predict- the most important, the prediction is, I think we'll do well in Australia. Yep. I think... I hope, right? I'm, I'm, op, I'm op, uh, optimistic, optimistic about seeing more truth from this because at the moment mm-hmm. it's just hype. There's so much hype. Mm. What's the truth? I do Can think we get to that. I do think it's positive that you know that we did lock down pretty hard for say a couple of months, but there are movements already beginning to open up, and it's early May at the moment, so maybe by end May we'll have opened up a lot more, and that you know we're only recording say ten or twenty cases nationally at the moment right each day look I'm not, I'm not a policymaker. Mm. i'm not in politics if i was to go out on a limb yep. i'd say open up for everyone mm. under 40 under 50 yep. under 60 you know and but, maybe but, keep people older but if you're worried yep. about your health or immune system or any of those things stay in lockdown please it, it be extremely careful like yep. my parents i wouldn't be saying to them you know go back to life as, as, know, normal, as normal. Yeah. No way. no way but one of the big things that i want out of this for everybody improve your health yes Right, health, exercise, your immune system. If yep. you look at that first, yeah. I think this is a pandemic because we eat shit. We do. We don't exercise. Yep. You know, everything's on tick. Yep. Everything's coming later. Yep. yep. Right. We can worry about that later. Mm-hmm. We're not living optimal, healthy lifestyles. One thing I did do before this all began, I went to the vitamin shop and I got every fucking vitamin I could. You know, mm. like zinc and vitamin E and vitamin D and all these things that were supposedly yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe good. Also, quinine. I'd been drinking. What's it called? Because because chloroquine. You know, that was a malaria medication, and, I, and yeah. I've heard that quinine yeah, is yeah. good for you as well. So I've been drinking a half a bottle of um, what's it called? Soda water. Each. But we're all Sorry, tonic water. But we're all doing that. We're yeah. all going. What vitamin can I buy? What yeah, yeah, thing yeah. can I buy? Yeah. And you know, like seedlings and, and growing your own that, veggies yeah. and all that sort of Home stuff. Home cooked meals rather than take out. Do all that, right? Like that's where you get health from. Like that, the food, what that's you're true. putting into your body, and then yep. go. You know, it's great to see people going for rides and walks. And yep. you know, you can't buy a bike in this country. No, nah. at the moment, it's, oh, it's gone. I know, I know. But that, if people can keep that up, yep, that's a positive that's what thing. we need to do, right? Like, yeah. and and uh, the other side of it is, you know, not so reliant on China. Yep. Pharmaceuticals, exactly. products, plastics, all this stuff. Yep. Look to other countries when we do yep. reopen. And ourselves. Yes. And ourselves. More industry here in Australia. You Work know, make Australia Work great again. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to reference people to coronavirus data and insights for family and friends and also Michael Simonetti's homepage is very interesting for information about the coronavirus and COVID-19. I'd like to thank Michael today for speaking to us. Thanks, Rich. Great talking to you, mate. You too, buddy. And uh, hopefully this has been informative and it might have been a little bit long, but hopefully it was worth listening to. And thank you, listeners. The report from Tiger Mountain. That's it for today. Cheers. Cheers.